Hi guys, welcome back to Get Your Shit Together. I am your host, Belen Salomon, and this is episode 16. And I am recording live from Los Angeles, sunny Los Angeles. I got in early this morning. I'm very excited to be here, obviously. And I'm here for work and I'm here also for pleasure. I'm gonna see my family and friends and I'm very, very psyched. I'm also very psyched because I am set up to do this on the go. Sergio, who is truly amazing, set this up for me very quickly in like two days. So now I can record when I'm on the go, have more guests on and just have a little bit more of flexibility and different backgrounds. You know, I feel like lighter area is more me. So I'm very excited. I'm also thrilled to be here because I have a guest and she's a guest of honor. She's my dear friend, Jackie. You know her as Jackson Rose on social media and she's one of my best friends. We've known each other for over 10 years and she's truly one of the fucking funniest people that I know. And I'm just really excited to have a dialogue with her because we're going to talk a little bit about everything. Um, she recently got married and we're going to talk about weddings, do's and don'ts. She embarked on an incredible fitness journey and just also her career and how she's really dedicated herself to growing an audience on Instagram and being able to do it full time. So I think it's going to be a really fun conversation and I'm just pumped. So without further ado, let me introduce you guys to Jackie James Miller, or I don't know if it's Jackie Miller James. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie fucking Miller. I would also like to clarify that when she said I was one of her best friends, she met we her go. the best friend. So just in case I anyone did. has any questions about that. Well, well, you know what? We'll ask them later if they need to say anything. Perfect. Um, I'm really happy you're here. Honestly, I've been waiting for this moment since you, you decided to launch the podcast <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that when she decided to launch a podcast called Get Your Shit Together, I was probably the inspiration. You were. You definitely were. I mean, I feel like a lot of my friends were. I mean, obviously, Alejandro was really my fucking inspiration. I mean, that's fair. Oh, yeah. But I think that everyone knows I am far from having my shit together. And I think we've all accepted that I probably just never will. So we're just trying to make the best of it. It's true. I remember when you came to visit one of the first times and your luggage situation. I don't think I've ever gotten more messages from people saying she needs help. Honestly, I just don't pack well. And my thought process, I'm going to literally cram as much as I possibly can into this space. And I can barely pay my bills on time. So the thought of me using packing cubes is mind blowing. And I just don't know if we'll ever get there. I mean, I, I've used packing cubes myself. And honestly, like, meh. I just, I don't think that they save that much space. I mean, listen, the way that I pack is truly traumatizing and I'm sure anyone will tell you, but I feel like the saddest part is that's truly the least of my problems. Oh, I, I know. So we have, a, we just have a long way to go. Listen, listen, everyone go back to your seats. Everyone relax. Okay. It's going to be fine. Did my clothes get there? Did my bag get there? Yes. Did yes. It, all honestly, if I get to the right place that I'm supposed to go, That's if all I'm in matters. the right state, if I land in the right state, we've already won. So I agree. Well, we have a lot to uncover in this episode. We it's do. probably going to be at least four hours long. We do. Minimum. I have a lot to say. So let's see. Why don't I, I'm going to give a little bit about how we met. Perfect. How we bonded. The best day of your life. The best of your life. And oh. just how the evolution has happened. And also, obviously, we're going to talk about the wedding because oh. I think it's you're going to have a lot to say about it. And I have like, a lot uh, to say about it. I know you do. And also just like do's and don'ts and like just like tips that you can give people because especially having a wedding after the pandemic, I feel like a lot changed in the industry. Honestly, the hardest thing, and we'll get into it later, but the biggest thing about planning a wedding is usually the idea is that you only plan a wedding once. And when you're well, planning the first, me, 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 never know. <laughs> when you're planning a wedding, everything that you learn, there's no way you can learn it unless you've just planned it. 100%. And then afterwards, you're always like, if I only were to knew. do this again, if I only knew. And so I'm telling you, all of you, if you are planning a wedding sometime soon, if you have a friend planning a wedding, I have a lot to say to you because I'm going to give you the real 
the rundown. real deal. And also and like wild. how the cost and all of that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, also, if the audio is not amazing on here, guys, I apologize. Um, this is a work in progress. I wasn't recording for the first 10 minutes of this. So here we are. The audio might not be great, but our personality is great. Our so personalities really make it. up for it. Um, so Jackie and I met in, it was, I want to say before, before we got engaged. Yeah. I, I was, oh, yeah. um, at that point it still looked like I was going to die alone. 100%. Well, there was a lot going on with you. There was, there was a lot of things happening, but my bangs to start with. But yes. Yeah. So Jackie and I met, I want to say in like 2012, yeah, I right. Think it was 2011, 2012. Yeah. And we met through a mutual friend and we just, we are soul sisters. We were for sure separated at birth. Thousand percent. And we just really like Jackie and I are not the smartest in the group, but we're the scrappiest. A hundred percent. And also I would like to say that I might not be book smart and very street We're smart. very street smart. Jackie and I like don't ask us like anything like important in history. No. But let me tell you mm -mm. something. You want to know a pop culture? You, these are the two people you fucking want to ask. A thousand percent. And I'm sorry, but like. And we might not be the strongest like spellers, but like we've got really big souls and hearts. And like honestly, it's like autocorrect. Who needs to spell anyway? I mean, I agree. Like, like grammar's overrated. I like, who needs completely. That? And we always said if we would have been in high school together, like we would have gotten kicked out of every single fucking class for sure. Well, I would always get sent to the principal's office Same. because my Obviously. skirt was too short. Well, I always had a bad attitude. Well, that well, just kind of still here. Not much has really changed. Nothing's for you. changed. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Um, so we met, and basically, we just like we always kept our friendship and relationship strong and Jackie is very much like me where she is extremely thoughtful and caring oh, you are and I think that was a big reason why like we always kind of bonded because like I feel like when you find someone like that you are like you hold on to them because I and you we do it out of joy we do it out of like like it, it means so much when somebody thinks of like oh, I know you like this coffee or like I, I saw this earring, like whatever the, the thing is, you're very, very thoughtful like me. It's it, when, you, when you become an adult, you realize that it's really hard to find friends who have the same expectation in friendship as you do or who goes about the friendship with the same energy and intention that you do as well. And that's really, you realize that's hard to find. 100%. And one of the episodes that I did a couple back, um, I talked about like protecting your energy. Yeah. And... I light up when Jackie walks into a room and like you light up when I walk into a room. Like it's very rare to meet people like that right. in your life. And w that was an instant connection for us. Like it's just, it's always been this way. And Jackie has always like, Jackie's the best person to call in a crisis. Oh, true. Even though like, usually everything's 911 in like your life sometimes. Oh, sometimes. Jackie's the most calm. Like you could call her and be like, oh my God, like, my apartment's flooded or I have to have surgery. She will show up and Listen, she will have a Xanax. I am oh, probably from Mexico. I am from Mexico. great at emergencies. You're, you're really great in a I'm crisis. I'm not good at my own emergencies. Which is really strange because you like, I'm, even though I'm very organized and everyone knows that, like everyone always says like, if there's an apocalypse, they're calling me because I'll have everything together. But I, because I'm anxious, I have anxious energy. Mm -hmm. So I'm like very like, oh fuck, I go from zero to a hundred worst case scenario immediately. I'm planning like, you know, the funeral. No, I mean, yeah, you've thought you've had I mean, obviously. a crazy disease like 87 At nights. least I'm for sure to find one tomorrow. It's wild. Yeah. So Jackie's very calm in emergency situations. And she basically kind of lived with me when Alejandra was traveling for two years. Honestly. Best you time were of the life. best time of our lives, honestly. Let me tell you something. I had a gorgeous bath. I always had lavender spray in my oh, room. It bridal. was like staying at a Four Seasons. It was a good house. And she like... And basically her child. She yeah. would make me every meal. Yep. I'd fluff her pillows. I'd make her breakfast. Uh, you know, it, it's my love language. I mean, I really should have just never I mean, left. I kept telling you not to get married and okay, to just move in with I'm us. really rethinking a lot now. So, Austin doesn't do any of that shit. So since we're talking about weddings, you recently got married. I did. A couple of weeks. Well, about two months ago. Yeah. So we love weddings. We 
love we love weddings. weddings i still have my wedding dress also we're phenomenal wedding guests so any of you if you need to true. add a couple to your guest count true. like literally we are wedding crushers we will turn we will up fucking turn the dance up. floor we will so you recently got married and i obviously there's so much to like dive into here but kind of give us a little bit like your experience with planning the wedding obviously coming out of a pandemic um like the budget, mm -hmm. going over budget, if you did, if you didn't, and like what you would do again and mm -hmm. what you would like, what was a waste of money? So I think the biggest part about planning a wedding is you just assume that when that time comes, it's like in the movies, like every single part of planning is so fun and you're so happy and you're so thrilled and it's just the best year of your life. And there are a lot of times where that's true, but there's also a lot of times where you're so emotionally unstable yeah. and mostly because it does bring up a lot of like stress and anxiety and fear and not even about your relationship just about there's nothing that can really prepare you for how expensive a wedding is uh, oh, what, and the thing is everyone uh, I, and everyone does warn like everyone does warn you right they're like oh yeah it's expensive it's expensive and, and, and it know, is like you know it's going to be expensive but mm the how much everything costs and I'm this can be I mean honestly whether you have a smaller budget a decent sized budget or a crazy huge hundred thousands of dollars it is just mind-blowing so when I started looking in the very beginning it was like the first month of planning and we just jumped right in with finding the venue that was the first thing we were going to do so that's your 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 number one tip is finding the venue I think finding the venue first is the best idea. I, I agree. Like for us, it was like, we found the venue yeah. and then I was like, okay, I can plan like my wedding dress. I exactly. can plan things. So I agree. I think the first thing that you should do is figure out yeah. the venue. Well, and something that again, I had no idea was that obviously the first thing you need to do is figure out your budget. But when you find your venue, that will determine where your money is going to go. Because some venues you walk in and they're like, you can use our venue, but you need to use our cater. You need to use our rental right. company. Um, some venues are like, it's ten dollars or $15,000 for this venue, and it doesn't come with even a napkin. Like, you have to hire out everything. And um, would you say, I mean, I guess you, you don't technically know, but would you say from your experience of talking to different vendors and different mm -hmm. people that the pandemic changed shit? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, yeah. And even vendors, when we were having conversations with them, they would say, like, listen, our, like if you looked at our website, some of our pricing is different than this quote that we're giving you and that was pre-pandemic. And especially, I think one of the things that shot up the most was florals. Uh, Flowers totally. are already crazy expensive, yeah. but. So I ask because, so Alejandro and I got married in 2015, which yeah. seems like, you know, it's ancient. It was seven right. years ago. We also got married in Italy. So it was a little bit, it, it's just different. And like, it, it's funny because it's not funny, but people always think, oh, it was so expensive. It must've been so expensive. But the thing yep. is, is that it's, I was actually, don't get me wrong. Obviously it was expensive. No, it just, it wasn't outrageous in the sense of like, had we had the wedding that we had in the U S exactly. We, we, First of all, our wedding was like four days long. It would have been a one day thing here. Absolutely. So it, it is so much different there with like the flowers and the candles. Like it, it all depends on your venue too, right? Like oh you said, gosh. like if your venue happens to be, maybe it's outdoors or it's like, you know, like a old cathedral, then mm -hmm. you kind of don't need maybe so many candles or so many exactly. flowers. So I feel like it's totally changed. I think social media has changed weddings as well Majorly. because they can Majorly. be like, oh, so-and-so posted and Majorly. tagged and blah, blah, blah. So they can skyrocket prices, which doesn't fucking help. It's honestly, I realized that I am in the wrong business and that what I should do is go buy a property. And I mean, these people are especially people who have properties they rent out for weddings and yeah. they do not supply the catering the food the rentals they literally i mean our venue was like that they we wrote them a check for the venue and that was so it. you had to outsource everything i outsourced everything and yeah even your makeup time, artist you're looking liter at her literally i did my own makeup because well I'm, we did the bridesmaids makeup i yeah, you guys there well i would like to say that's probably the part that 
Bolin's really excited to cover, which is just how um, unorganized I am in general. And even it really proved to me what a hot mess I am when even when it comes to something I was so excited to do, which is plan a wedding, I still couldn't get my shit together. I know, I know. And I text my best friends a week before the wedding saying, hey, um, I have a really good idea. I think you guys should do my bridesmaids makeup. Thanks. Mind you, I can like, I don't, I don't know how to contour or anything, but you know what? We, we really came through and in we a clutch. Wanted a we came through look. Everyone, and Belen had a really good attitude. I did. Leanne was really happy. My mom was very impressed. She was like, wow, your friends are so supportive. Well, Crystal didn't really, you know, Crystal was steaming. Crystal wasn't allowed to do anyone's makeup. She was allowed to steam. I need her to steam every single wrinkle out of my veil. You guys get friends who will show up. It's true. And we all show up for each other. We do. Great. Pause, Sergio. One second. Is it say ten percent? So rude. It's fine. If you want to stop it, it's fine. I'll turn it back on in a little bit. Um. Okay. Sorry, Sergio. So. Okay. So let's get into the unorganization part because I think this is where we're going to thrive with this dialogue. Oh, so, Lord. obviously, everyone knows I'm very Type A. If Belen is type A, I'm literally oh, a oh, Z oh, minus. Oh, okay, actually, this is this is. So your mom and your sister were. Oh so my she, gosh. They made a comment. They're like, so Whitney, Crystal, and I did the bridesmaids and her mom's makeup. Crystal, Whitney, and I are all very type A. Whitney and I more so. No, to the point where like I don't even know how you guys are friends with me sometimes. <laughs> because you bring joy. I mean, uh, well, because my personality. Your personality is great. Yeah, yeah, um, that's true. So here she has like three friends who like are very like on top of their shit. So her mom and her sister were like, wow, like Jackie's so lucky to have like such organized friends. And I was like, well, yeah, like she has three type A, per like type A personality friends. And she goes, oh, well, what's Jackie? And we're like, mm, we, would, we would say she's about a Y, about a Z. I don't even think I'm but in she's the, the calmest alphabet. of the group. But honestly, true. Like you're I, the funnest of the group. I agree. And you I know? feel like. I mean, shout out to my dad because he said I was the funniest daughter. But um, you are you no, but like I'm the personality that I have is rare. Well, I think it's a gift. I think really what I want people to know about you, too, is that I really admire this about you, honestly. And like Crystal and I have talked about this. You like you handle punches. You True. really do. And you you do it with grace. I'm not complimenting you right now. She sounds, loves when I compliment her. Sounds like a compliment but to me. It you really like it's something I really admire and wish I was more like because you just like you really go with it. Like if it's whether like it's a joke, you're always in on the joke, I guess, and like yeah. you really just go with it. And it's I, I am so fucking sensitive. It's like the terrible quality that I have, but you really adapt to it really well and I, I think love that's self-deprecating humor and my dad has and my sisters have such a dry sense of humor yeah that in my family and my household the commentary and the humor yeah I gotta cut oh it thick skin let me tell you yeah no but it's it's a quality that I I wish more people had me being one of them and it's a great quality that you have and I think you'll always have it because you you just you just let it slide like I don't think you've ever really been in a bad mood like you've had of course your moments and you've had times where you've been sad or down or you know yeah. but overall like you just roll with the fucking punches I mean, I do. That's so funny because I feel like my husband and my mom would probably be laughing right now because they're like, oh, she's, oh, you're not in a bad I, mood ever. But I think it's also, there's certain people that bring that out of you. And like with your mom, like obviously our moms can coddle us and right, like right. they baby us right. where like, I, you know, there's been for me when I've had moments and I've been very open about this, like last year was a really hard transition for me and I was very, yeah. very yeah. down and like. Yep. I would call you and you would give me the pep talk that I needed to hear. And like you, you, you're level headed. Do you know what I mean? Like you yes. weren't, you weren't being like, yeah, you should be like, you were like, yeah. look at it from the other point of view. Look at it. And like, that's like the yin and the yang where it's like, yep. you, you have to have that in a, in a friendship. So you're, you might have your own mini crises with certain people, but you show up for those who need it. I, yeah, that's definitely like a, like how I show 
love yeah. to friends and family is trying to show up in their time of need. Like, and I actually enjoy being that person. So that's definitely. Yeah. She actually sent me a really amazing video that I still have. Oh, honestly, I, I give such she a, gave a really good, good pep talk, talk, you guys. I should have been a life coach. You really should have been a life coach. Yeah. She was having a meltdown and I basically was like, listen, you're really pretty. <laughs> and at the end of the day, like that's like all that matters. So stop whatever you're worrying about. Like your hair looks great. Your skin looks great. Like. You have nothing to worry about. Like, it was a good pep down. talk. <laughs> you guys, honestly, if you need a pep talk, just DM me. I'm like, By the so way, I do the pep, it over text. The too. pep talks go much further than just vanity, everyone. So like there but, is depth I mean, to those this. Are, those are my favorite ones. I yes, know they are. I can get really emotional. So you're welcome. Okay. So you're planning your wedding and what, what do you wish you would have done sooner in the organization part? And what is something that you were like, I could have lived without this. And it was like three grand, five grand, whatever it was. So as far as what I wish I would have done earlier, I'm going to go ahead and say probably everything. Okay. But there is something for brides. I think that is so important is that week to two weeks before your wedding, people told me this and I didn't really listen. And they were like, you want to have every single thing done before that time do not leave even the smallest task to that last week that last week you need to be able to just relax i didn't listen there were little things like i needed to get i don't know film for the polaroid camera or order a bunch of things on amazon that week of mm -hmm. and because I let all of these little things stack up until that last week or two, just because I really didn't think they were a big deal. I was so stressed. Right. Like you, you stressed yourself out for something that you oh didn't. Oh my gosh. I didn't enjoy that week before my wedding at all. I was so stressed. I was like crying every day. I was a disaster. And so that's a huge piece of advice. People told me that I realized like have every single thing done before that week. Give you and your, you know, fiance that week to be with family, to chill, maybe go to the venue, or if you're having a destination wedding, get there a couple of days early. Like that was something I really wish I, I would. I also think that's really like, I mean, I, I, I relate to that because I mean, the week before our wedding, we, it was a clusterfuck. We were yeah. trying to get everyone's schedule. We were in, we were in a foreign country. So it's hard to be in the moment. It's right. hard to be in the moment in the wedding. Like you're like, Every, everyone can be like, relax, relax, relax. But uh, I, it's all this momentum and build up, And then it's over in fucking 10 hours. I think that's the other thing, honestly, I would really. And I don't know how to do this differently, but the situation with the photos is really difficult because like like currently just when it comes to the wedding, right? That day. Right. I didn't realize you are spending such a huge portion of the day just taking photos and you know that that's really important you want to document everything but when I look back at my wedding I really tried to consistently be present and to remind myself be present be present be present and I did probably the best job I could have possibly done but every time I went to talk to someone I went to was finally feeling like I was in the moment and being present I would get pulled away by the photographer. I remember because we were trying to dance on the oh dance floor. Oh my gosh. And that was... And we love dancing. ...really <laughs> tricky because I felt like I spent 80% of my wedding day just taking photos. So you know what's interesting about this is, again, we got married in 2015. I feel like Instagram was kind of just starting. Right. And I feel like social media has escalated this photography situation because for sure also like Alejandro hates fucking taking photos so he yeah, was like my um, husband was not. yeah he was a monster he was like we're doing this for 30 minutes because right. I remember so did you do a first look we did not and okay, that so, was okay. I have something to say about that remind me so we didn't uh, see I was very like I will you guys I was so gnarly the day of the wedding like no one could see me Which I, I needed yeah you want to reveal Exactly. I needed drama. That's, I was going for the same A hundred percent. So I, everyone did was like, do the reveal, get the photos out of the way. And I was like, I just like, I'm doing this once and I want tears. I want drama. And I just don't want to be ready at like 2 PM. That was another thing. I, 
I, yeah, it was so important, especially to my husband. He was pretty chill about everything. But the one thing he was like, I want to see you for the first time when you walk down the uh-huh. aisle. And I didn't uh, want to uh, take that away just because of the logistical part of the planning where it's like, well, we'll get the photos out of the way. Yeah. And, and by the way, you don't get the photos out of the fucking way because you're still taking photos. And you after. still are not going to get. So ha- you're kind yeah. of like robbing them. And again, to each its own, do what you want to do. Right. For me that I still, I'm so happy I did that. And then I'm so I highly, highly I, I agree because I think there's only there's only a, a there's only a few surprises in life, right? right? Right. I think that's maybe that's not a surprise, but like I think that's a moment that you're looking forward to. I think also, obviously, I don't have kids, but I feel like people who choose not to find out the gender, that's kind of a really fucking cool surprise. Yeah, it's, like, it's that how same, many moments in life are you going to be right, like, is exactly. It, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. And I'm so, and like the emotion that came out of that moment, it was such a different level of emotion because we hadn't seen each other. Yeah. Um, but I do remember the photographer saying, just so you know, if you do not do a first look, that time to take photos during cocktail hour is going to be rushed. We're probably not going to get a lot of photos that you want and we're going to have to pull you away different times. And I'm like, well, I think for you, you also had a, a pretty big uh, bridal party. Yeah. And I have so much family. And yeah. So much. So it was, it like, was I have no photos with my friends from the wedding. Like we, you guys, we look at photos and it's like, it may as well should have been a bull fucking Blackberry because the well, iPhone was not great in 2015. It wasn't, but also, my strip lash and my okay. bang that and my true. BCBG dress was so tragic that thank God I don't have it a lot of photos. We have the memories here, though. Um, you guys, my eyeshadow was black, not like even like she a looked smoky like a eye. Raccoon. It was black, you and my like strip raccoon. lash looked ridiculous. And I mean, I don't know why I was even allowed to attend. I looked insane, but that's neither here nor there. That is neither here nor there. But but yeah, so for you it's it was the photographer so what's your tip on that do you tell people to do it before or after because so, i feel like it's a it's a it's a it's a conflict honestly i was this is what i did and i feel like i had a complete earth shattering idea tell me so we were looking through the photos okay. and i love so many of the photos but i was realizing i did not have a ton of photos of just me in my dress or like the back of my dress and that was the favorite part of my dress Obvi. okay so your mom was like put on it put on your dress yeah she was like put on your dress do your makeup let's take some more photos and we went out leanne's a fucking and homie took photos and i realized to take away some of the stress of the day is i think it's a phenomenal idea to book a second photo session for after the wedding to get some photos of either you and your dress some really great photos of you and your fiance obviously you're not going to be doing bridal party family or friends at that point listen that's not important right <laughs> i'm like uh the second shoot I, my husband wasn't even there it was just me and my dress uh, it, but even better i was like listen i'm this is the dress of my dreams i'm yeah, never gonna wear uh, it again I, I want photos of the details of my dress to like show my kids and to have to post and whatever and I was told by someone that in Europe, a lot of um, couples do, and this is obviously not something I would do because I love the first look, but just to be able to enjoy the day and not worry about the photos, they take their photos together like a week before the wedding and they get it out of the way. Damn. And I, was I wish like, I would have known wow. about this. And there's something to that just because, I mean, again, my entire wedding ceremony I was taking. Or, um, I mean, I, I didn't see you. And then yeah. you hookers went and took photos without me. And then Crystal yelled at me. Well, she was... She was so out of control of them. She, she was, was like, so out of control. She gets angry. <laughs> I would also like to remind everyone that she did take an open bottle of wine off the head table when she left to get on the shuttle. She really... She was hung over for like a week. Well, now she should be. Well, that was the expectation. Yeah, I exactly. Okay, so I think that's a genius idea about taking photos a week, two weeks, month, whatever, after your wedding. Yeah, get the detail photos. That get you want. the details. I have 187,000 photos of my veil now. Oh I'm here for it. Oh my God. I wish I would have done that, honestly, because my second dress, there's no, there's no, yeah. there's no proof I even wore it. Basically. And you'll have the photos of the day, but then the photos of you in this amazing dress and maybe some really cool photos of you and your husband, like do it the week after. Okay, so what is something that you recommend people they do do? Um, I obviously suggest, and I was unsure about this in the beginning. It's so funny because I was like, I'm so creative. I love throwing parties. Like, I don't need a wedding planner. Oh, you definitely oh, need a, a wedding planner. Um, 
I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I was not thrilled with mine. Oh, she she um, she was not great. So I and she had an attitude. Yeah, and she had tude. I she did, and I hired, which I didn't even know that there's three like categories. You can hire a planner full time. You can ha- hire a planner for part time, like maybe for the last four months, or you can just do a day or weekend of. I should have just done a day of because I pretty much planned the entire thing myself, me and my mom. Yeah. Which is why I learned so much. But if you have a good planner, I've realized that will change everything. Oh, my God. I remember when Jackie told us, she was like, yeah, I'm not going to hire a wedding planner. And we were like, yeah, maybe I had no if, idea. if you were like super, super organized. Like, yeah, I feel yeah. like I could have done my wedding had it not been in Italy. But I, exactly. I obviously the language barrier and the vendors and all this. But I remember when she told us we were like, no fucking way. You have to get a wedding planner because you don't want to be the day of your wedding lighting 3000 votives. Right. And I mean, just or dealing with people just, who are checking in and well, questions. And just to give you guys an idea, like I had a wedding planner and it was the day of the wedding and we realized no one had made sure that there was ice at the venue for my wedding uh, or this, water. This, this, is what, this was the crisis when we were doing the makeup. So, the, so a lot of the things that I thought I wasn't going to have to deal with because I had a planner I ended up dealing with. Um, but I did really realize that take, allocate a part of your budget. Now, there are some planners out there where, I mean, listen, I wish I could afford that are crazy, crazy expensive and it's just outrageous. Not saying you have to spend a shit ton of money, but use a part of the budget, really allocate it towards someone that not only knows what they're doing and has great reviews, but that you vibe with, like you have to vibe with the person. uh, By the way, I completely agree with you. Like it's your wedding. And I thought we were vibing in the beginning and then halfway through, I was like, yeah, we're not vibing. Um, But get someone you vibe with, like talk to them multiple times on the phone, ask them as many questions as you feel like you need to, to make sure that you guys are going to work well together. And then, also, I realize a lot of planners would get, and we had a decent sized budget, but they would get really snobby if they did not feel like my budget was high enough or if they were feeling like I didn't want to use their contacts. Vendors. Like yeah, I yeah, maybe yeah. wanted to use a different vendor and they would get like kind of like attitude about it. So you just need to find people that vibe with you and that honestly just aren't snobby and bitchy because. Yeah. And that, that are good at their fucking job. Yeah, I mean, not having water and ice on the wedding. She was, well, she wasn't good at her job. (laughs) Like that was the biggest thing. She wasn't good at her job. Okay. So your number one tip is to find the venue first. Find the venue first. Obviously budget, that's kind of goes, don't go to, go find your venue if you don't know your budget. Yeah. And the venue will, that will be, I mean, that's going to really change everything because like our venue had, was it surrounded by a ton of florals. So I felt like I didn't really need to use a big portion of the budget for florals, you know, during the ceremony, we were kind of getting married in like this garden atmosphere. And again, you need to find out like what I do have to say, I thought we were going to save a ton of money by picking a venue that did not come with catering or bar. And that you, I was like, well, great. We'll hire a caterer that we'll like. And then all of the alcohol, obviously we'll hire bartenders, but we'll get all the alcohol from Costco or Bovmo. At the end of the day, I'm not sure that we saved that much. Right. Um, so I don't know if I would recommend doing that. Looking back, I probably would have gone with a venue that has the catering and the food. So kind of like an uh, all-in package. An all-in package, yeah. Okay, now, so finding the venue. Mm-hmm. Ideally, a venue that offers everything that you need. Right. Um, we're both agreeing that no first look. I, I love we like an element of surprise. Doing, yeah, I really love not a first but not having a first look. You're suggesting to, if you can, and by the way, you don't even need to hire a professional photographer, but like have a friend take photos of you in your dress maybe a couple of weeks after. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, I mean, you do, I mean, you're going to want a photographer to get photos of this, of the day, right? Right. Um, but what I didn't realize is a lot of photographers, like their packages are like start at eight hours. And I'm like, well, that's plenty of time. You end up going over with the photographer and the videographer almost every single time. So I think if you can plan on doing photos of you and your husband or fiance or whatever, um, a week or two after, it will cut a lot of pressure. And I also have to say that what I wish I would have done was when it was time to take photos, 
have a list. I had a list of the photos I wanted to make sure that I got, but I should have had a complete, like very detailed list of this is what we're doing. This photo, this photo, this photo, like back to back. And as far as like even poses or certain photos that I wanted, that's maybe was something of like the back of my veil with the sunlight hitting my veil. Like you need to be so specific about what photos you want because it goes so fast. Yeah. And it, you it, get you kind guys... of overwhelmed. Have a list, have photo references and like have like your maid of honor, have it on their phone or print it out and be like, we're doing this photo and this photo and this photo and give it to your photographer and like have it like ready to go. And I want to emphasize this is for if, this is if you're somebody who really wants photos because like some people are like, I don't, I don't give a fuck. You know right, what I mean? Right. I mean, of course you want photos, but if you're somebody who really wants to hit every single like angle photo inspiration, like that's a really good idea. It's, it's basically like if you are showing up to set, right. Exactly. And it's like every, exactly. there's like a break, like you eat, you do this, you do that. So like a legit shot list. Or if there's like grandparents or a certain family member that you're like, Oh my gosh, I really want to make sure I get a photo yeah. with this person. Like, even though you're like, well, I would never forget that you do, you forget Cause you're rushed and you're kind of stressed well, and overwhelmed. You're like not there you're there but you're not like you're it's like an out-of-body experience a hundred percent and then like li you guys post wedding blues is fucking real i can attest oh to this i was gosh. depressed for like a year i wore white bed for like two weeks i wore white every day still and mm -hmm. even when jackie got engaged i was like i'm still wearing white to your events i literally thought she was gonna show up to my wedding in her dress and i was like honestly i can't even be mad because if it keeps her from having a mental breakdown well, i'll support it i for the record i did not show up in the wedding dress i still have it though well, I mean, I should have brought it to this. You should. We should have worn our dresses we for really, this podcast. Episode. Part two, we'll do that. And then any. So you told us our. You told us your your do's and your don'ts. But what is one thing that you can tell people that you wish you would have done? That maybe some advice that someone gave you and that you didn't listen. Aside from like the last two weeks thing, right? I think that a really great piece of advice is no matter how much you plan, how detailed you are, how organized you are, how much money you have, there's going to be parts of the day that just aren't going to go as planned. And certain things that might turn out, you know, or not turn out exactly how you want. But I really made the decision. A friend said to me, you need to decide what kind of bride you're going to be. And you need to decide that from the beginning of planning. This is a, this is a great, this is who said that? That's a great piece of My advice. My friend Shana, who yeah. is just full of wisdom. And she said, you need to decide what kind of bride you're going to be. And she Did had to remind that. Did you say I'm going to be that, Bridezilla? Yeah, well, I said, <laughs> I don't think I made the right choice. <laughs> but I really had to remind and she reminded me of that multiple times but at the end of the day like I know this sounds cliche and corny but like you're getting married because you love this person and yeah. it's a celebration of like the only time in your life where all of your best friends and family are going to be in the same place at yep. the same time celebrating you and like your love and totally. that. so where like it doesn't matter if the fucking flowers aren't perfect it doesn't matter if like you weren't able to afford the gigantic floral arch or all the candelabras you wanted or the venue you know isn't perfect it's like no one is going to remember that you couldn't afford the peonies in the middle of your bouquet. Like no one. Or someone playing the harp. Or someone. I, should, I do kind of wish I had a harp. You know. I'll lie. But decide what kind of bride you're going to be and like stick to it like that. There were several things that did go wrong that day, including the fact that we thought it was going to rain. I have uh, to say was Jackie stressed. was as cool as a cucumber the day of her wedding. All of us were like, what are you on? Like, and I didn't even take a Xanax. She was so chill. She didn't even cry, which was so weird to me because we're very emotional calm. people. And like, I was sobbing when you walked down the aisle with your dad and uh, like, just yeah. like I, I was, but I feel like I didn't really cry at my wedding either. Like I were, I remember I had so much anxiety at the thought of my dad walking me down the aisle. Cause it's like, it's my dad. He's like the best. I, that's, I thought I was going to, and you have a really similar relationship that, to your yeah. dad than yeah. I have my, and I like, I just didn't cry. I also, cause like my dad was like telling me jokes when we were walking right, down the aisle. Right. Right. But, I didn't have a lot of emotion either. And I think because you're, you're like in that fight or flight, right? And your yeah. adrenaline is so fucking real. You literally cannot get drunk. I was not drunk once. It's for one minute at the wedding. It's a bizarre at my feeling. Wedding. And I, I think I was so emotional leading up that maybe I cried it all out. But people told me you might be like oddly calm the day of. You were. Something happens. And I was. From the second that I woke up, 
I was like so calm. It was very weird. I was, there was issues at mine as we won't get into <gasps> just like dynamics of right, right, some right, of right, the right. people that were there. Right, but right. I, I think for me too, because I am so controlling and this is not a good quality, but I was like, is this here? Is this here? Is this here? And I right. totally regret, like, I remember thinking, why the fuck was I stressed out about the stupid flowers? I mean, it's hard not to be like, again, like that's why my friend, because you like, have this you have vision constantly and you've been planning this for a, a year, like kind of your whole life, but you've been planning oh. de- every single detail for a year. Yeah. So it is devastating to think that one of these things might not go as planned. Yeah. You spent so much time, money and energy, but at the end of the day, like I remember I was panicking about something that was like 45 minutes before something that didn't turn out quite as I wanted. And I remember I felt like I was starting to panic and I felt this huge wave of disappointment. And yeah. like, oh my gosh, are people going to like this? Are they going to think it looks good? And like, and kind of spiraling. And then I remembered my friend saying, remember what it's about and totally. choose to like be the no one that you want to be. 100%. No one's looking at the stupid shit that we obsess no about. One's, yeah. I think that's amazing sound advice that Shayna gave you. Mm-hmm. And I would say, not that anyone's asking me for my advice, but I'm going to give it, is to be flexible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because for a perfect example is the weather. No one can control the fucking weather. You guys, and it was like a str- like, sick joke. It was bright, sunny, 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky every time we looked at the weather for, weather for an entire year in advance. And then three days before it was like flood, <laughs> rain, lightning. It was, and I was like, you've the got weather, to be but, And the weather was beautiful. It rained on our wedding too. Like, at the, again, no one's there because of the weather. They're there because they're celebrating love and they're celebrating a commitment and they're just like stoked to be there for you. You know what I mean? So I think like Jackie said, choosing what kind of bride you're going to be and then being flexible, I think is like so huge. I mean, I literally had to be like, dude, you're not Kim Kardashian. Like TMZ and Us Weekly is not here taking photos. I mean, we were taking enough photos to be TMZ. Like no one cares. I mean, I wish you should have seen Crystal. She was like in the aisle with you. I mean, oh, that's a good friend. Any, I just want a shout out to anyone that sobbed during my ceremony. You're, I did. You're a real one. I did. Well, so did Whitney and Crystal I honestly, was yelling at her. I would have been, which leads back to Crystal, but I would have been pissed. Yeah, I agree. If my friends didn't cry. My friends were crying at my wedding. I told my husband, I was like, if you don't cry, I'm going to have blackout, dead to blackout me. rage. And then he actually like, really he was sobbed sobbing and couldn't get together. And then I was like, oh, uh, that, that's what was so shocking is that you weren't. And he was, I know you guys, he's literally obsessed with me. Well, who isn't? I am. I mean, you're you're just so lucky to have. Okay. Well, I want to ask so many more questions, but we are. It's shockingly coming up on an hour. But what I this is something I want to ask all my guests is what are what is a non negotiable for you for like your wellness, mental health, and just like what I think over the years that you've grown and you've transitioned into like the woman that you are today. What are some non-negotiables for you and also be now like a new wife? Um, two things that I've, I've really learned over time is be really careful of the company that you keep. And I, I'm not saying that you can't have friends or have relationships with people that maybe, mm, have certain qualities that aren't your favorite but if you hold them at arm's length that's one thing but your inner circle like the people that you talk to every day the people that you see all the time the people that you put a lot of energy and effort into you need to be so careful who those people are because I spent such a huge part of my life keeping people around me that really didn't serve me didn't bring any positivity and they just took a lot of energy yeah um and I kept those toxic relationships around because I just felt like I had invested so much time. In well, that, you, you know, I think, and this is, a, this is a good, like, it's a great quality, but, and I do this too, but you're a people pleaser. Oh, major people pleaser. So it's like, you want everyone to be happy. And I'm like exactly. this too. It's like, I want to make sure everyone's taken care of, but like, who is, who the fuck's taking care of me? Right. And that was a hard, like learning to put distance in certain places was really hard. So But once I started doing that, I saw a really big shift. Um, And then the second thing, which I mean, again, might sound cliche, but I realized a complete non-negotiable in my life is exercise and working out and choosing carefully like what I'm eating because I've spent so much of my life 
going like I'll be super on or super off or yeah. eating healthy. And I picked up these terrible habits of like emotional eating. And, um, that's a whole other like episode on its own. But now that I've chosen to actually commit, commit to having a healthy lifestyle, I mean, the transformation Jackie's um, had, very, you guys, is really, inc- we didn't even touch on this, but I mean, I th- you've lost a 35, 30 pounds. You've lost a lot of fucking weight. And obviously, as I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, I've known Jackie for 10 years and I've seen the, the roller coaster that yeah. you've gone on. And I remember when you, like, it was, I remember having conversations with you and I was always like, slow and steady, Rian yep. wins the race, slow and steady. And I talk, I've talked about this in other episodes. There is no fucking quick fix. No, this is I, I've long, tried them, guys. It yeah, doesn't work. <laughs> I've tried them all. This is longevity. Je- longevity, excuse me. This is a lifestyle. This is you choosing yourself every single day. Exactly. Not a crash course. And it's, I mean, it's incredible. Like you really have, and not only have you like physically transformed yourself, I think you've transformed also your mindset on it. And now you're like, this is my life. This was, yeah, I mean, because it goes so much further than um, aesthetic reasons. Like I was not happy with the way I looked. I didn't feel comfortable going to events. And then that spiraled into like depression and anxiety and all these different things. But it came from a place of like, I'm always going to, you know, indulge and have those moments. I believe in the 80-20 rule. But I started coming from a place of like, you need to love yourself more totally than eating like, I don't know, the fries and the burger and the milkshake and then the ice cream down the street when you go to that with friends later and then drink eat like love yourself and love your body more than to make and that by decision the way, every day like i'm not speaking for you but it's not that you can't do those things 100% you, you just don't need to do them every day of course it's all about the balance right and i've talked about this too it's like you do the 80 20 diet where exactly. it's like you are fueling your body with what it needs and then you, like you still indulge and you still live in life. Cause also this regimen and, and this is a truly is another episode. Cause I've like recently start was talking about this with another friend, but we put ourselves in these boxes and it's like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to be vegan and I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that. And then I'm not going to, I'm going to be keto. And it's like, it doesn't have to fuck. be all or nothing. And honestly, I'm here to tell you that does not fucking work. And no. if it, for the few people that it does work for, good for you. I, I still don't believe you, but <laughs> I don't believe that you're happy. But you know what? If eating, you know, fucking lettuce every day and never eating a gram of sugar ever again, if that's how you want to live your life, like kudos to you. God bless. But that is just not for me. That's never that going to be not me. for me either. Like, do you know what a miserable bitch I would be if you told me no chocolate? You can't have cho- like, I, know. I would Jackie and I have a weakness with our sweets. Uh, that's I would. That's not going to work. No way. Well. I think that's really amazing non-negotiables and I'm so happy that's a non-negotiable for you because I think it's really like aside from the physical transformation, I think it's done wonders for you mentally and um, I'm really happy you were here. I'm really happy that I'm here too and I can't wait to come on next time. Well, if you move to Austin, you could do this with me every week. Okay, you left me. I would like you to You should think you. about your decisions in life. Okay, I'm not thinking about one right now. I hope you guys like this episode and I love you. I love you. And make sure to subscribe, guys. And I will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hopefully I'll be back next week. Yes, you will. Bye.